Good morning, students. This is a poem, Milk for the Cat. Before moving to the poem, let us first learn about the poet. Harold Edward Monroe was born on 14 March 1879 in the Belgium capital, Brussel. He made an important contribution to the development of Great War poetry. As founder and proprietor of Poetry War Bookshop and editor of his own periodical Poetry and Drama, he felt a responsibility to survey the mass of wars that began appearing as soon as the war broke out. He had poetry bookshop in London which helped many famous poets to bring their poetry before the public. He died on 16 March 1932 at the age of 53. A Milk for the Cat is a children's poem about a cat, how she gets her daily dose of milk. The cat goes to the poet's house daily at 5 in the evening. Knowing that it is a tea time at poet's house, she appears without fail and at the right time. Now, let's start the poem. When the tea is brought at five o'clock and all the neat curtains are drawn with care, the little black cat with bright green eyes is suddenly purring there. In this stanza, the poet explains that when the tea is prepared at five o'clock and the curtains are still drawn or closed, at the poet's house, the cat used to appear at the window with its green eyes glowing, waiting patiently for the milk to be given to her. So as a routine, this cat used to go to the poet's house daily. At first, she pretends having nothing to do. She has come in merely to blink by the greed. But though tea may be late or the milk may be sour, she is never late. In this second stanza, the poet tells us that the cat pretends as if she has nothing to do with the milk but just paying a casual visit. So, this cat is always given a milk. Sometimes it, it may be late. Or sometimes it can be sour, but the cat is never late. It comes on time every day. Here the word great means a metal frame for holding the wood or coal in a fireplace. And presently her agate eyes take a soft, large, milky haze and her independent, casual glance becomes a stiff, hard gaze. In this stanza, the poet tells us that as time passes by, the cat's hunger for the milk increases. In this stanza, the poet uses a poetic device called metaphor. The eyes of the cat have been compared with that of the precious stone, that is the word Agate eyes. Agate means the eyes which look like a precious stone. So now when she gets the milk, her two eyes looks like agate eyes, like precious stones. Then she stamps her clothes or lifts her ears or twists her tail and begins to stir till suddenly all her lithe body becomes one braiding, trembling purr. In this stanza, the poet tells us that as the cat's weight progresses, it tends to attract the attention by stamping her clothes and lifting her ears. And if it fails to attract the attention and milk, 
she begins to purr loudly. The children eat and wrinkle and laugh, and the two old ladies stroke their silk. But the cat is grown small and thin with desire, transformed to a creeping lust for milk. The people at the poet's house carry on with their evening tea without paying attention to the cat. And then the poet tells us that the children eat, laugh and play among themselves. Whereas the two ladies adjust their silk robes and did not give attention to the cat. And this rejection made the cat's desire for the milk stronger and she became small and thin and craved for the milk the white saucer like some full moon descends at last from the clouds of the table above she sighs and dreams and trills and glows transfigured with love now at last the time came that the saucer was in front of her with a milk and she became so happy that the saucer looked like a full moon she nestles over the shining rim buries her chin in the creamy sea her tail hangs loose each drowsy paw is doubled under each bending knee now the cat gets ready to drink her milk and she buries her chin in the creamy sea. Here creamy sea is the milk. The milk look like a creamy sea. And then she and then she plays her paw under her knee and enjoys her milk while her tail hangs loose. A long dim ecstasy holds her life. Her world is an infinite, shapeless white. Till her tongue has curled the last holy drop, then she sings back into the night. So now the cat enjoys her milk. She is in deep ecstasy. Ecstasy means a feeling or state of very great happiness she enjoys her milk she felt as if her life is full and she felt as if the world is unending she is not worried about others but she is focused on her drinking so she consumes the milk as like a holy water she enjoys each and every drop of the milk and drinks slowly now once she finishes her milk she returns to night draws and dips her body to heap her sleepy nerves in the great armchair lies defeated and buried deep three or four hours unconscious there satisfied with her hearty meal the cat then sings her sleepy body into the armchair and there on the armchair the cat falls into a heavy sleep and lying defeated by sleep unconsciously for a good two to three hours. The milk for the cat central idea revolves around a cat's weight for the milk that is served every day at the poet's house. The poem follows each movement of the cat as she waits for the milk. The poet describes the focus with which the cat enjoys her meal and the deep sleep of satisfaction that she falls into after her meal is over.